Okay, ladies and gentlemen, and have I got a good one for you today? Well, I like to think I have a good one for you every day, but this one in particular, I think is going to be of interest to those of you who love gold, who are gold bugs, and those of you who don't yet love gold as a, a store of value or don't see the benefit of it, I think you will by the end of this video because we've just had a very interesting announcement out. This actually happened five days ago. It took me two days to even hear about it because it wasn't in any of the media. And then I've just been watching it the last three days to see what would happen because I was pretty confident that the currency would strengthen. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about a new gold-backed currency, which has just been launched. This is the first one globally in this sort of generation time period. But I also want to talk about the US Federal Reserve and what they have, um, they're quite upset about this. The IMF, the International Mafia Fund, Monetary Fund, is also really upset. That they've released a statement. They're deeply concerned. They're going to be monitoring it. There's talks of all sorts of things. In fact, I'll show you the sanctions as well. And, uh, you know, when you understand this stuff, like many of us do, you know what exactly is going on. We're seeing this, this change in power. And I'm, I'm working on a, a small documentary piece as well, which I'm hoping to release probably in May time, but early if I can. And it really is about this changing dichotomy of, of powers, global powers. And it's not necessarily just these superpowers that you would think of, USA, China, but there's a there's a lot more going on because when you have smaller countries or smaller powers that are getting together, you can also see that change. We saw this in throughout history when the Roman Empire or the Ottoman Empire or we could, I could name a dozen empires were challenged when smaller groups got together and said, actually, enough's enough. We're not going to let you do this or conquer this region and things like that. So we have a lot of examples of this. And, and this is another thing that I'm seeing at the moment. Um, so we've got a lot to talk about. I want to jump straight into the shared sc um, screen here. And I want to begin just with a little context. So where is the US dollar official? So the official currency of a country. And it's not actually many. You would have thought it's more than this. So the USA, obviously, and this is the largest, it's $21 trillion. And then if we go down, uh, Puerto Rico, of course, is a, a territory of, of the US, although it's disputed, that's 100 billion. Ecuador, a country, 100 billion. Uh, El Salvador, 25 billion. Uh, Zimbabwe, which is what we're gonna talk about now, uh, 18 billion. Now you go down and it's a lot less. So really the main countries where US dollars are used as a currency is the USA. And then it's also used as foreign reserves. So central banks hold US dollars. Now, we talked about this in other videos and the Great Depression diaries and things like this, but you'll all remember this photo. This is where the wheelbarrow is worth more than the, the, the money being carried, the currency notes being carried in it. And, and we talked about this a lot. I've actually got one of these bills here. This is a $100 trillion dollar uh, Zimbabwe <laughs> bill. I've got one in the studio here somewhere. Now, this is what's happened then. This happened five days ago. Zimbabwe launches a gold-backed currency, and this is to replace this local dollar, which has just been getting battered. It really has, over the last decade, what they've had five or six that I've kept track of currencies that have struggled. So this is how the uh, how Reuters is talking about this. Zimbabwe is replacing its collapsing local currency with a new one backed by gold and foreign currency. So it's not just gold. We're hearing a lot that they've replaced their, their currency with gold completely. That's not correct. It's also with other foreign currency. So this will include US dollars, no doubt, but it hopes will be more stable and help bring down inflation. And let me just say, right off the bat, I think this will bring down inflation. I'm fairly confident of it. I also think we're going to see the Zimbabwe dollar strengthening if, if they properly and fully 
commit it to, to gold, which I don't think they will. And you look at the reserves at the moment and it's they haven't, and I don't think they will. But if they did, you would see that dollar strengthen so powerfully, especially against the US dollar, which I think will weaken against emerging markets as time goes by. But again, that's a forecast for the future. We'll have to, we'll have to look at that more. So let's continue on. The bank referred to the new currency as structured, saying it would be anchored by a composite basket of foreign currency and precious metal. So mainly gold held as reserves for this purpose by the reserve bank. Now, let me just add another point to this, which again, I haven't seen in any of the articles. And that is just because they are, or any country says that we are anchoring the, the, the money, the, the, the dollar, to the gold, it doesn't necessarily mean they are. They can still, unless it is, you know, gold and it's printed on there that says this gold coin is equivalent to however many dollars or, or whatever. Unless they actually are distributing gold, then it's always open for manipulation because you could take that gold and you could put it in the, the bank and then you say, OK, we've printed this amount of dollars and that's going to equal the gold. Well, yeah, maybe. There's nothing stopping them. Look at times of war. We talked about uh, Roman Empire and Ottomans and all these other empires. You look at what happens during times of war. You look at World War II. You look at World War I. Why did the US grow so much World War II? It's because all the other European nations, their currencies collapsed. They were just printing, 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 printing to pay for the war. And if you if actually, if you remember the lessons from my wealth psychology course, I really went into detail on this as well. And I talked about how the taxes came about during World War II as well. These taxes, like in the US income taxes, that were not legal. They were just put in, similar to COVID, right? They bring in emergency measures. And the next thing you know, <laughs> they're permanent measures. So especially in the US, you were never meant to have all of these taxes that you have today. And, and this is why um, I was just talking about this on the coaching group on, on Saturday, actually. And I was explaining to some people why it's so hard to get ahead in the West. And it's because the, you're sort of indoctrinated into this system, which is a, is a combination of media, it's a combination of education, it's, it's governance, it's, it's all these other things, that it is an indoctrination system to put you into this funnel. Think of it like a marketing funnel. Oh, well, if you don't do X, then you're an outlier. There's something wrong with you. If you don't have the best car, there's something wrong with you. If you don't keep up with the Joneses, if you don't you know, strive for this, oh, you haven't got a credit card. What's wrong with you? You haven't got 10 credit cards, right? This is the system. It's a trap. It's a debt trap. And this is the whole thing that I'm against. And this is what a lot of the, the videos on this channel are about as well, to, to stop people from falling into this debt trap. Because, you know, you can, go to, you can go to anything. You can go to the Proverbs. You can go anywhere. When you are a debtor, you are a slave to the lender. And, and it's so true. It's never been more true. That we become slaves to the lender. And we're way off track now of this gold video. But I just wanted to really emphasize that because I think it's so, so important that everyone understands these things and how we're, we're brought into these traps and it's so difficult for people to get out. And I've warned everyone during COVID as well to be careful with all this free money, you know, this free, oh, we'll extend credit lines and all this. Because I said, what's going to happen? Interest rates are going to spike. Credit card rates are going to spike. You're going to see inflation go rampant. Every, all the prices are going to go up. And then wages aren't going to keep pace and people are going to get squeezed because they're not going to lower their living standards. That's exactly what we saw. And now people, and I saw it, I was in the UK over the weekend. I went across to the UK and I was talking to so many people on the streets, in shops. I spoke to dozens and dozens and dozens of people and everyone said the same thing. I spoke to dozens of business owners. They all said the same thing. I was in all sorts of shops speaking to the checkout ladies. And I said, what patterns are you seeing? I'll give you an example. One store I was in, there was an announcement saying, um, current, current, um, money hasn't stretched far enough this month. Don't worry, we've got you covered with some payment provider. With just three payments, you want that, you know, it's like, and it was something so small. 
uh, $29.99. Don't worry, just three payments of $9.99. And I'm thinking, how have we got here? Seriously, how have we got here right now? It's uh, let's get back into the gold, because <laughs> well, uh, I'll I'll go on for ages. So the banks now they're, they're converting their, their Zimbabwean dollars into this new currency. It's called the Zig with immediate effect. While people will have twenty one days to exchange their old notes and coins for new ones. Now I think this is completely unreasonable. Twenty one days is not long enough. What if you are visiting family in another country or something? So again, and we saw the same thing with other countries. We saw this with Nigeria and, and all these other things. So even though I'm for this gold-backed currency, they are doing it in a bit of a sneaky way. Now, okay, that was five, five days ago. Now, as we look at it yesterday, April 9th, Zimbabwe's new currency, the ZIG, strengthened a day after its debut, the central bank said. So it actually strengthened because it's gold-backed, not fully, but partially gold-backed. And then we come to, and I believe this was today, I'm pretty sure this was today, and what do we have from the FT? Zimbabwe launches a gold-backed currency to replace the collapsing dollar. And um, These Western media outlets, remember, they're all um, joined, so they'll say all these sort of strange things. So what do they say? Economists are skeptical about the so-called zig, since many people prefer to keep their money at home. Uh, again, nonsense. This is propaganda. They're trying to spin stories here so that other people don't get ideas that, oh, look at what's happening. It's actually strengthened. The, the currency is strengthening. Why? Because it's not a fiat. It's backed by gold. And we can see this is a, an example of a fiat currency. This is the way they all go. The Zimbabwean dollar has plummeted in value this year. Look at, look, I mean, look at the value of it. It's absolutely plummeted. There are doubts from economists, of course there are, that these reserves will be enough to support a new currency, especially given a widespread lack of trust, who have seen purchasing power and savings wiped out by years of turmoil. Yeah, well, that's completely biased. And the reason that's biased and why I don't like a lot of these media agencies, they are not looking at the fact. The fact is the reason that problem has happened was because it wasn't backed by anything. It was just another fiat currency, backed by nothing, and it plummeted. So what they've done now is they've backed it by gold. Perfect thing. You can't get anything better to back a currency with than gold, physical physical gold. But they've also not only done it with gold, but foreign reserves. And they have all the, the data here for how much in foreign reserves. So these are your euros, your US dollars, etc. Strong currencies. They're, they're backing it. And this is what they don't like. And the IMF came out with a strong statement. They're not happy at all. Um, and, we, and there's talks of sanctions and all sorts of things. The USA is not happy. Um, and they, they've got sanctions on Zimbabwe as well. You know, it's obvious to me what is going on here with all of this. So if we move on, the currency is steadily gaining ground. This is as of today, 10th of April. Zimbabwe's bold move towards financial stability with the introduction of the ZIG, a gold-backed currency, sees mixed reactions as it gains traction. Despite initial turbulence in commerce, which is normal, by the way, that is going to happen, including challenges for banks and their businesses adapting to the new system, the ZIG strengthens, let's just have a look at this a second, the ZIG, the ZIG strengthens against the US dollar. No wonder the US are not happy, as in the, the Fed is not happy about this. Uh, the IMF, so here, here we go, the International Monetary Fund, which in February urged the, uh, <laughs> my brain's gone funny, liberalization of the exchange rate, said it will support authorities' latest efforts to restore macroeconomic stability, adding that it needed time to review the design and implications of a new currency arrangement before weighing in with an assessment. So basically, Zimbabwe just pushed ahead. They said, look, we don't care what you say, because this happened a month and a half ago in February. They've just pushed ahead with it. So the IMF wanted them to just do nothing while the IMF assessed it and made their own plan and said, oh, hold on, we think this, maybe we'll give you this amazing loan. Again, that's what the IMF does. They give these loans which then impoverish the countries because they can't pay them back properly. And no, Zimbabwe just pushed ahead with this gold-backed currency, foreign reserve-backed currency. 
And now the IMF is not happy. I, I'm not sure if I got the statement actually from what they've just said, but e either way, they were really unhappy that Zimbabwe didn't listen to them. And uh, yeah, this is the uh, where we are. So what's behind the latest US sanctions? <laughs> I think I think we know what's behind the latest US sanctions. Um, new sanctions on Zimbabweans, including the president and his uh, his wife, uh, uh, human. Uh, okay, so the again, this is exactly what we saw with Gaddafi. Okay, what I don't know. I don't want to get too much into the Gaddafi story because I, I could talk on this for two hours. But if you actually look at, and last time I talked about this, people said this is nonsense. I was in an uh, economics forum, not not a world economic forum. Let me class that again, an economics forum online. And I was just, I was a contributor and I was talking about Gaddafi and what he, what was happening in the country because they were talking nonsense. They said, oh yeah, human rights abuses and all this, the people were, were suffering and no education, no food. And I was like, sorry, where, this is absolute nonsense. Where are you getting all this from? I said, there was free education in the country. There was, you know, there was uh, loads of energy. Everything was, was, was good for the average citizen. I said, all this stuff is nonsense. I, what actually happened, <laughs> okay, very controversial here, but he, he started, well, A, he wanted to move away from the energy with the US dollar, but he wanted to gold back the currency. Within days, there's a humanitarian, what, did they, what, did, what do they call it here? Oh yeah, human rights violation. Within days, he's sort of, you know, this uh, <laughs> most wanted list. Oh, but he hadn't been for decades. All of a sudden, he goes to gold back in and other stuff. And uh, yeah, so that's all I'll say on it. I, we won't go too much in it because we, we want this video to stay online, don't we? We don't want it getting banned. The US is also the largest provider of humanitarian aid to Zimbabwe. I didn't know this. $3.5 billion. I wonder how much of uh, aid is going to the own citizens. $3.5 billion. Wow. In fact, the US seems to give money you know, to pretty much every other country except their own citizens that are struggling. You look at the wealth divide in the US. I've never seen anything like this. I don't even know. It's probably the most extreme wealth divide in history. Again, I don't have the data and charts in front of me, but it's probably the most extreme wealth divide. And, you know, people always argue this with me. They say, oh, no, but the average salary is like, you know, up here is massive. Yes, only because you look at CEOs that we talked about yesterday, Jamie Dimon, and he's earning whatever it is, tens or hundreds of millions a year. That's one man's salary. You look at all these other CEOs, they're earning tens or even more millions per year. So you can't argue to me and say, oh, well, you know, look at the average wage. It's whatever it is. I don't even know what it is at the minute in the US. It's, it's, absolute, it's absolute nonsense. It's skewed. You look at the minimum wage, what is it, 725, something like that. You try living on that in some of these states where house prices have gone explosive. And it's mainly in certain cities, which hopefully I'm going to release my documentary this um, this weekend. I'm fingers crossed. It's in 4K, I believe. So it's it's a lot of work. But it's going to be talking about these 15 minute cities. And it's all gonna, it'll all start to make sense and, and connect the dots with all of this. Gosh, this is a long video. Okay, we're, gonna, we're, going, we're going long on this video. <laughs> Last year, Zimbabwean um, vice president said the country had lost more than $150 billion because of sanctions imposed by the European Union and the United States. These sanctions, and this is according to a special what is this? What I've never heard of this word before. Rapporteur. Okay, I'm going to have to look that up. I'm going to get my dictionary out afterwards. So a special rapporteur on unilateral coercive <laughs> measures. Gosh, imagine this job title. Said these sanctions had exacerbated pre-existing social and economic challenges with devastating consequences for who? The people of Zimbabwe. Not these leadership because they just it doesn't affect them especially those living in poverty, women, children, elderly, people with disabilities, as well as marginalized and other vulnerable groups. And by the way, 
this is what sanctions always do. And I know my videos weren't popular on the uh, Russian sanctions when I outlined what was going to happen. And people were furious. Reports, reports on the videos. YouTube, my YouTube channel manager, Neil, you need to stop talking about these Russian sanctions. It's like a flood of people reporting the video. And I'm like, but it's true. It's true what I'm saying. These sanctions are not going to weaken Russia. They're going to strengthen Russia. They're going to bypass all of this. It doesn't matter. You're going to hit them hard at first with SWIFT. Yeah, okay, sure. Um, you can have all these, co these companies pulling out. They're just going to rebrand the companies. They have rebranded the companies. They're going to bypass it all. They're going to use gold. They're going to use oil. They're going to sell the oil to uh, intermediaries. Um, they're going to sell it into BRICS nations who don't care about the sanctions. Look, I know these. I know it wasn't popular opinion, and I saw the comments. People were not happy that I was saying these things. But look, sometimes you just got to look at the stats, the mathematics, the economics of it, and and this is what's happened. Not to mention the self sanctions on us. Look at energy prices; they've never gone back because of what has happened. Look at food prices. Some of that is from the sanctions on fertilizers and and other things. Uh, natural gas that was pumped in, like. I'm sorry, but it's, it's a fact. Some international banks have also cut ties with Zimbabwean banks because the US Office of Foreign Assets Control penalizes US companies or individuals who do business with any sanctioned individual. Again, this is how they're going to get people in the future as well over climate and all the other things that they're uh, pushing through, uh, farming and food supply, because they will penalize you um, via the power of the bank uh, of the banks. Now, just quickly, I wanted to mention so I don't forget gold. If you look at gold over the last six months, it is up almost twenty. Well, it's twenty five percent. It's up over twenty five percent. So we have seen massive growth, and I, I'm not convinced that it's over yet. I, I'm really not convinced that this growth is over. But does that mean you should go out and invest in gold? Not necessarily, because I don't see gold as an investment. What do I see gold as? And I've said this a million times now. I see gold purely as a store of value. I don't see it as an investment. I see gold as real money. And I see dollars, pounds, euros, the paper. I It took me a long time to get this as well, psychologically. But I see that now just as paper. If you give me a, a bill, it doesn't matter what bill, you give me a $100 bill, I don't look at it and say, oh, oh $100 bill. I look at it and say, it's just a piece of paper. And I, and I look at it and, and in my mind straight away, it says, and that piece of paper is depreciating. That was probably worth $1,000 if you were to go back far enough, that $100. So I don't see it in the same way. I see gold as the store of value. And yeah, it goes up, it fluctuates, but you can go way, way back, way back in history. And you'll see the gold really hasn't ever lost its value. You, you could, um, someone gave a good example of a man with a bowler hat. And they said, you know, a bowler hat back in the day would cost this much gold. Now, if you were to buy something equivalent today, it's still the same amount in gold, even though the dollar term has changed. It's quite, it's quite interesting. And it's true. Healthy bank, healthy central bank buying has continued in February. So again, we've seen global central bank gold reserves increase by 19 tons in February. So look how many months this has been going on for. China is holding huge amounts of gold in preparation. Uh, Kazakhstan, now look at these countries and tell me in the comments the pattern you see here. Kazakhstan is buying. India is buying. China is buying. Russia is buying. <laughs> Who else do we have here? All of these countries are buying. In fact, in fact, I'm pretty sure I've got, yes, here we go. So. This is who has been buying in 2022 because we don't have 23 data yet. Turkey, China, Egypt, Qatar, Iraq, India, UAE, Kyrgyzstan, Tajikistan, Ecuador. And then we've got a lot that's unreported. What do you see as the pattern here? <laughs> it's the, they're all either BRICS nations or they've applied to join BRICS. I think there's something going on behind the scenes. I've talked about this a lot. Uh, China has just bought another record amount uh, as well of gold for the 17th month. 
Uh, what did they? It rose to 72 million troy ounces. Uh, the precious metal has been on a tear in the past two months, hitting a oh, central bank buy. Yeah, this has just gone absolutely crazy, led by China and India. And this is all according to the World Gold Council, by the way. China, Gen Z are all out buying gold. It's become fashionable to buy gold. So they're buying a lot of gold as well. Between Jan and October 23, gold and silver jewelry sales in China increased 12 percent and this is by younger consumers so they're buying these very small amounts which may not seem like a lot but it's it's all adding up because there's so many of them costco selling 200 million in gold bars monthly this is an estimate by wells fargo what else do we have and i wanted to get on to the most important well not the most important but an important point i wanted to talk about the federal reserve has refused to provide records of foreign gold holdings. And I think this is pretty obvious why it's clear to me. I'll talk about this in a moment. I think my theory is that since these sanctions have occurred, all of these, these countries that were holding their gold in the US have gone, <laughs> wait, what? All the Russian gold, all the dollars and everything were, were, were basically taken as a sanction. Um, hold on, I'm allied here with Russia, I'm allied with China and India. Well, if China gets into some sort of dispute over Taiwan, where Biden's already said that we'll go to war, uh, <laughs> you know, it still baffles me that he's, he actually said that. He actually spoke those words and everyone's like, no, no, don't say it out. Be political. And then he retracts and he says, yes, yes, we will defend. And it's like, it's the same thing, dude. You just said the same Thing in a different way. <laughs> oh gosh, Th this is uh, this is this is what I think is happening. They're all pulling their gold reserves away from the U.S. because they're worried of what's happening. So when the Fed's asked, and then they refuse, so Jerome Powell evaded it, he refused to answer, and then they declined to comply with the Freedom of Information Act request, which is really very dodgy. The Fed's lack of transparency comes amid reports that countries are removing their gold assets away from the US. According to a 2013 Invesco survey, a substantial percentage of central banks expressed concern about how the US and its allies froze nearly half of Russia's 650 billion gold and forex reserves. And of course, the UK had to get involved saying that, uh, <laughs> that they were jumping in with saying, oh, these countries... They're helping Russia and Russia's ev ev evading the sanctions using gold. Well, duh, obviously that was going to happen. I mean, how did people think that was not going to happen? I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. Well, a bit of a long one today. And uh, <laughs> yeah, a bit, of, a bit of a long one. Probably went on a bit of a rant today. But I think it's really important you understand what's happening. And we have had the first, the first country go that they've gone back to a gold standard and if we see more countries follow the lead with this a i think their currencies will strengthen if they actually do it properly but i think you could see more conflict i really do think you could see more conflict because some of these people in control are not going to relinquish that control easily and i think that is the the real risk especially with people going to our gold standard. So we'll have to monitor this. We'll have to see how it goes. But uh, that's you up to date for today. Thanks for watching. Take care. God bless you and your families. And I'll see you tomorrow.